Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about showering with a broken foot, injured or sprained or broken ankle, or surgical recovery for a foot injury. I have found that this is something I've been practicing quite a lot lately because I recently broke my foot. I'm about two weeks out from a fifth metatarsal fracture on my left foot. So you'll see I'm in a little boot, um, and this technique that I'm going to show, I'm actually going to show a couple of techniques, have been thoroughly vetted as I've been recovering from this injury. So I want to talk a little bit about the equipment that you could use in this process if you find yourself with an injury basically from the high ankle and down. So this would not necessarily work for any injuries above the high ankle, but for everything below it, this should work just fine. The first thing I want to mention is a tub transfer bench. Tub transfer benches are really the gold standard when it comes to non-weight-bearing lower body recovery periods. They are the safest, they are the most well-balanced option. I've done a lengthy video on how to install and use one safely, and I'm gonna put a link to it here. So if you feel like you're somebody, for example, who has really poor balance, a lot of pain and weakness in the, in the non-injured side, the non-injured leg, or maybe you don't really trust yourself to do a lot of, you know, a little more tricky maneuvers, the tub transfer bench is going to be the best option for you if you have a tub shower combination. If you have a um, stand up shower or you yourself have a stronger uh, non injured leg, the other two techniques I'm going to show will work well for you and won't necessarily require a tub transfer bench. So let me show you what I have for those. I have been using myself this shower seat, and I want to pull it up a little bit so you can see it. This shower seat has no back and no arms. So it's really pared down. It's set for my height, a very comfortable height. Um, and then I added the addition of this cushion that goes on top of it. It's a rubbery cushion by DMI, very low cost. The, um, I found it on Amazon. I'm gonna link both this shower chair and the cushion um, in the description. So let me set that back down there for a second. Another thing that I strongly recommend in any recovery period is that you have a handheld shower head. If you're going to be seated for any part of your bathing process, having a handheld shower head that you can bring down to yourself is going to make it so much more comfortable. So I have one in this shower and I'm very lucky too because in the past I installed this grab bar on the wall here. That has been a lifesaver as well. It is not essential. You can do this without it, but I really like having it there. And then I go ahead and put my shower head in the little holder that attaches to the grab bar. This setup was awesome, especially early on in my recovery when my pain was higher and I was stiff. So this whole thing right here is not essential, but a really nice thing to have. I'll put some links down below where you can find similar items that could be installed temporarily in your shower to cover your needs. Okay, so let's get down to it. How would I transfer into the shower to complete my bathing? So the first technique I'm gonna show requires the most leg strength, meaning the most strength in your non-injured side. I'm gonna be using crutches, but pretty much any mobility device, crutches, a walker, um, a knee scooter, could all work for this particular type of transfer, but crutches I find are the most common thing people come home with from the hospital. So just standard crutches here. I'm going to position my shower chair behind me, and the nice thing about having no arms is I can actually sit from this edge of the tub back onto the shower chair, but it requires a lot of leg strength for me to lower myself down in a controlled manner. So what I do is I back up so that my legs are right up against the edge of the shower. Now I will point out, I have a very inaccessible shower here. It's got an extremely tall edge and it has this added metal lip because it actually has glass doors, which we removed for the purpose of this video. Um, you don't have to remove your glass doors for this technique, but it is nice to have them away because it gives you a lot more flexibility for chair placement. Okay, so I put my crutches underneath my injured side arm so that they're there to support me. I have a towel within reach and I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna kind of hop back. Very, very important, you never try to sit until you've reached back and located the seat, okay? So I'm gonna reach back, I've got the seat in my hand and I'm gonna lower myself down very carefully using the crutches to support me, okay? I was able to maintain non-weight bearing throughout that process, but again, that's a low position and it's almost like a single leg squat in order to do it. So if you don't think you're strong enough to do that, this transfer is probably not for you. Now at this point, I would place my crutches away and I would swing myself the rest of the way into the shower. You have a couple of options here, depending on your situation. 
I do not have a required boot wearing at all times. I can take mine off. I do not have a surgery or any wounds underneath this, and I don't have strict boot wearing precautions. So I leave mine on just up until I get into the shower like this, then I remove it, really to protect my foot, and then I put it back on when I get out. I like to have it in when, on when I get into the shower because I've knocked my foot before and it really, really hurts. So this just protects me. If you have a boot wearing requirement at all times, say early on after a surgical recovery, you can complete your shower just like this, sitting with your leg outside of the shower. And what I recommend to keep your boot dry is a handheld shower head so you can direct the water and simply place a towel over your knee. That will keep the water for the most part from getting down into whether you have a shoe like this or a higher cam boot or an ankle boot or even a cast. So now that's really not going to get wet. This is a good way to do it if you don't wanna to have to deal with covering the boot. You can do your shower from here, it works really well. All right, if you want to take your boot off and you have a um, incision, so if you're recovering from surgery, for example, you can take off the boot and then cover those incisions with um, usually like a, a plastic wrap, or you can put a little covering over it. Sometimes they come, you come home with a waterproof bandage on it. Just be aware if it's a foot uh, incision, they don't want it sitting in water. So if you have a kind of a slow draining tub and you're taking a shower, there's a chance that there's gonna be a little bit of seed, sitting water in the bottom of the ch ch uh, shower. You don't want to rest your foot in that. You want to elevate it, either bring in a small stool or again, leave it out of the shower entirely. Okay, let me show you how I would get out this way. This is where it takes the most strength. So I would dry off from here. I would dry off seated. I'd make sure that my foot that's going to be doing the volume of the work, my strong, my uninjured foot is very dry before I go to try this transfer because you do not want to slip. I scoot myself as much to the edge as possible, and I'm gonna put this leg against the side of the tub. I'm gonna have one hand on my crutches, like this. Make sure that they're square and stable because I'm gonna need them for balance when I stand up. Take the other hand, put it kind of behind myself so I can push myself forward. And on the count of three, one, two, three, I'm gonna come to a stand, and off I go. At this point, I would go probably to my bedroom, or I could pivot over to sit down on the toilet to continue to dry off and get dressed. All right, so that's the first technique. The second technique really highlights why I have a cushion on my seat. This is something you can only do if you're recovering from a broken foot or ankle or sprained ankle. This is not a technique you could use for a higher leg injury. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is turn a little bit. I'm going to treat my tub seat a bit like I'd treat a knee scooter. So a place to rest my shin for support so that I can transfer. Again, this requires a good deal of strength and balance um, and a little bit of practice, but I have found this is the technique I've been using. So I'm going to approach the tub's edge. I'm going to transition myself so that my injured leg is towards the seat. I'm going to put my crutches kind of over on this side as a balancing point, and I'm going to keep my, my non-injured leg on the floor. I'm gonna balance using my um, crutches, and I'm gonna simply lift my foot over the edge and rest it on the seat here. Early on in my recovery, when my ankle and foot were really, really tender and sore, that movement hurt a bit, but at no point was it a dangerous movement. So just know that I have truly tried this with a sore foot and it is safe and it does work. So now I've got my knee on here. That's why this pad comes in because if you rest your shin on that hard plastic, it hurts, okay? So now I can go ahead and place my crutches someplace safe. All right, and then I'm going to continue my transfer in. And at this point, I just reach down and grab the edge here. If I was facing the other, other direction, I could grab the wall or even my grab bar, but I just grab here and I bring my other leg in. Now I have options. This is how I've been showering. I like to stand. It just feels so good to stand in the shower. Because I have this setup here, I have the shower behind me. I can stand and take the vast majority of my shower just like this because the shower seat acts as a support for my shin, much like a knee scooter would. So I end up doing most of my shower just like this. I can sit for periods of time to shave my legs or if I get tired or if my ankle's getting particularly sore, um, I can go ahead and do that. But this technique has worked so well for me. So I wanted to show it here. Okay, and then to go ahead and get out, simply rest your knee on this again. So if you've been sitting like this, you can pivot down to sit. I would pivot back up. 
like that. And then I would retrieve my crutches so that they're close. Okay, and I'm simply going to hold my crutches and I'm going to put the pressure through my knee, lift my leg out. I'm gonna get my crutches ready so that I have my best balance point. And then I'm going to lift it over. Now you can see I had to lift quite high because my tub's ledge is quite tall. This is where I like having the boot on. It protects my foot if I was accidentally to knock it. So having the boot close to the tub so you can put it on and off in between um, after your shower is, is a good idea to protect it. So there you have it, a few techniques that hopefully will help you be able to shower if you have a broken foot or ankle or sprained ankle. If you have some questions and comments, I'd love to hear them down below. If you got some value out of this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.